It speaks to those three figures. Why? Because that's what those prayers are doing. If you listen to the prayers at Mass, we're always recalling the events of salvation history. The liturgic nerd word for that is amnesis. You're making present those actions. Making them present now so that you can enter into them. So that's what you're doing in that blessing of the water. You're saying, Lord, you cleanse the earth with the flood. You deliver the people from slavery through the Red Sea. You brought them to the promised land. You did all that to do that for this person right now as they are baptized. As they become a child of God and enter into the life. Make those events of salvation history present now so that you can enter into them. Renunciation of sin and profession of faith, and then the baptism. I was baptized with living water. Living water, very important. Why is this important? Going back to the ninth. 13th century, Gregory the Ninth. Letters to the Norwegians. It is something I understand the events who are baptizing children with beer. Please, refrain from such. I would like to remind you that baptism is to be done with living water. Living water. Living water, in a sense, they talk maybe moving, but more so, right, something that's been blessed. Right? Because that passage from John says, water in the spirit. <laughs> These are good details. These are things that maybe we can't quit. In time of the danger of death, or things of that, they can, but there's a reason the church says living water for a reason. But if it's not living water, it's better. It depends if it's in the danger of death. Because it also debates to what degree can you have silt or this or that. We had a talk in seminary about, well, if you use, like, coolers light, it's pretty much water. So that's <laughs> not very yeah, but that's, uh, that's very good. That's very good. Living water. Trinitarian. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Not the Redeemer, the Sanctifier, the Father, and the Mother, and the whatever. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For a valid baptism, that is necessary. And then finally, the rites afterwards, the anointing after baptism. Right? So just as you saw the prefigurements in the Old Testament, it's a difference, it's the sacred prison, it's the stuff that smells really good. I mean, beard balm and hand lotion with the scent now for heaven's sakes. Symbolizing, right? That kingship. The clothing of the white garment. A new life. That's what the owl that the priest wears is symbolic. The lighted candle. The light of life. Who wants to ask us today for candles? Right, it's the importance of the flame. That presence. If you come to Tenebrae during Holy Week, there'll be that whole liturgy where they'll put one candle out at a time until there's that one left. Church is pitch black. The full bars need to like bang hymnals on the pews to make it sound like the thunder and the rock of the earth. But the symbol of that light, and why the Paschal candle is so important, that baptismal candle gets split from the Easter candle. Don't just pull up your symbol and like the baptismal candle, and then it's okay, right? That symbol means something. This child has received that light. From Christ. It was manifest through that Paschal candle. That's why those eight days after Easter will incense the candle in addition to the altar. Symbolic of Christ's presence and that light here in the temple. And finally, the Ephephtha. The opening of the ears, the eyes, and the lips that you see in the gospel. Hear the word of God, to speak the word of God. This all kind of makes sense. This isn't just 
kind of solid bond and kind of string a few connections together, it seems like it's right. I may have bias, but right? the liturgy is something that has been given to us. Divinely revealed. Hopefully man is a good steward of it, but it's something that has been to us to remind us of salvation history and to help us enter into it. Right? We don't just act it out. We enter it into it. Finally, then you take the child if you, if you want some reason. Carry the child like Lion King up to the altar. Why would they do that? To make that link to know that the sacraments find their culmination in the Eucharist. So you baptize the child, the sun rites you confirm, and then you take it straight to the altar. You pray the Lord's Prayer. Right? In preparation. That this whole sacramental life leads to the the source and summit of the Christian. And finally, there's beautiful blessing for the mother and the father, and then everyone can go home and have cake and prepare. So here are then those five elements of baptism: matter, natural water. Evolution or washing of water, the form that I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But Christ doesn't say that, tell him to do it. That is necessary for a valid baptism. The minister, bishop, priest, even a deacon can baptize. Underneath it says, minister of necessity is that. Imagine, oh boy. <laughs> I know you will. Anyway. In a matter of necessity, in danger of death, anyone, yes, there's a certain house that says even a pagan can baptize someone a Christian if the intent is to do what the church intends. Now, again, this is a very rare situation. That's why I'm even hesitant to bring it up because then somebody takes the very small particulars and oh, the church, you know, pagan can baptize. In a very rare, very rare, if somebody is going to die. And they have manifested the intent that they want to be baptized. Okay, yes. All of you can baptize them. It's very rare. Oh, Christ, you mean all of this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Remember, I said Christ is usually the answer. Yes. Yeah. Recipient, a human who is alive that has not yet been baptized. In the past, something else has happened. That's Finally, the intent to do as the church intends. No willful rejection. So can grandma baptize grandchild if the parents don't want her to? I have a certain duty to 
would say that is wrong. That's nature. God is right. We do all these things in love. We help others to see the good. But we do have a certain duty to do that. And we accept that. And that's when I go to be converted, I publicly say, I, in front of all of you, accept this. I accept these responsibilities and I will do this. I will do this to the best of my ability. That's what that public nature of these sacraments means. And how important it is. You're given this special strength. One other kind of an erroneous notion, right? Confirmation is not the sacrament of the like, maturity. Right. I get it in high school, I'm now a, a Catholic adult. <coughs> I think that what happens to the Easter right? children, they get confirmed at three months. Are they have adults now? Well, not so much. To not view it as this is kind of like a rite of passage, but it's something that strengthens that the fun liturgy fact of the day. In the old rites of confirmation, and some have kind of brought it back maybe in a little more gentler fashion, after the bishop would chrismate you, you would then give you a nice little on the face. What does that mean? It helps you understand your moment in the church militant. Spiritual battle, warfare. That we have to go out and defend. That we have to fight for the faith. But it certainly has some value to it. Confirmation then in the early stages, there, this is just the catechism, there's also certain passages. Right? Paul is talking to the others and he says, we've been baptized, but we have not been sealed in the Spirit yet. That's where the church gets those distinctions. There's baptism and then there's confirmation. This Kind of special outpouring and strengthening. Always done by a certain laying on of the hands. So the bishop will lay hands. Does it individually or sometimes in the right of confirmation, he'll do it kind of more broadly. There will be that laying on of hands. A transferal of the grace, of calling down the spirit. The same thing that you see in Mass, right? The priest will always get pieces. Calling down the spirit. He's also in a sense making a tent. In Mass, he's making a tent over the gifts. In Confirmation, he's making a tent over you. What did the tent symbolize in the Old Testament? The presence of God. Shekinah. Right? To see that. And the beauty of that, as it happens, <laughs> as for the grace, it's a beautiful gift and grace. So I have that knowledge, and then as it's happening, at confirmation, just kind of like, oh my goodness. I knew the exact words of ordination, so when you should start to say that, I started like freaking out and crying and stopping all the things. To know what's happening, to know that you're being entered into the mysteries of that point, and the beauty of it. Finally, this beautiful line, right, perpetuates the grace of Pentecost, Pentecost in the church. That union in the spirit, that gift in the spirit. There's only a little more increase of the deep meaning of baptismal grace. Striking the rights, defending the confessing the name of Christ boldly. Gives you the Holy Spirit. And then you're installed with chrism. Okay. Right out of hands with chrism. And it says, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Here are your five elements. Chrism. The chrism blessed half the chrism mass. Again, this is another in case of necessity, there must response. It's should this be. It's kind of for the bishop. Where does one get prism? So by default, stick with the prism you get from the prism mass. 
You see, with the gift of the Holy Spirit, the <coughs> minister is typically the bishop. You have that link then to this more broad sense of the universal church. The bishop would usually go around assuming you are all bishops. Confirmed by the bishop. Those that have all of those that have them confirmed. Yes, yeah. Recipient, any baptized person who has not received, and to do as the church intends. That very question comes up why do you have high school teenagers? Do you willfully not want this? Or are you just not here? Because although you're not supposed to receive the grace in the capacity you should, uh, and it may not mean as much, if there's no rejection, that's separate. There must be a willful rejection of it. This all makes sense. Thank you. 
God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.